open gland collections have so many benefits. Um, I see open collections as a huge enabler for creativity from school students to professional artists, uh, technology enthusiasts, open collections uh, can help anybody create anything and express their ideas in the most creative manner. Uh, with more open gland material available, even scholars have greater access to artworks and perhaps art history book publishing also becomes less expensive, consequently making these books more affordable and when everybody has access to this the sector ceases to be niche i feel so open glam has so many different kinds of benefits really uh, but apart from open collections having a benefit for creative enthusiasts and scholars it's also a huge benefit for the institution itself i feel it's one of the best ways to market your institution really uh, even to those who may never have an opportunity to visit your museum, your gallery, your library, your archive. Um, it's probably the ultimate way to fulfill your mission of spreading knowledge and giving the power of using your collections to everybody, irrespective of the, the social or demographic barriers. And uh, it automatically gives your institution the kind of reach to people who you could possibly work with in the future as well. But there are several barriers to opening collections as well. In the last few years that I have been working with GLAMS in India, I hear different kind of questions, different kinds of problems. Um, right from digitization, the process, budgets for it, funding for it specifically, staff capacity, or even, I mean, I think the bigger problem is digital literacy around it. Uh, a lot of times at institutions, there's a lack of clarity on whose decision it is going to be to open up and what kind of, um, you know, I mean, who all are going to be involved and what kind of decision making this is going to be. Um, but most of all, I think there is a big gap, like a big missing policy uh, push over here, because I think even when a long time ago, when India was huge on internet access, um, even companies like Facebook and Twitter had to lobby and create policies and work with the government closely to make sure that everybody has access to it and is using it for marketing efforts or any kind of efforts, really. I mean, you know, but th this is the thing that in a country like India, where most of our museums were, are either under the state or central government, there has to be some kind of a policy arrangement or some kind of a conversation with the government to even enable this dialogue around opening collections and the possibilities around it. Um, and also, I think that for professionals to understand open glam as a process, as a value, there's also a lack of incentive there a lot of times. So there are these kind of barriers, apart from the questions around um, you know, the technology, the platforms, the image resolutions, so many different kind of questions there. Um, but I also think that for GLAMS right now, uh, from where I see, it's only in the recent years and especially over the last two years of the pandemic that they have started to recruit people with digital professional backgrounds uh, so it's it's really a lot uh, a lot of times for glams this is just um, you know a, a sort of the barrier for glams to open up is more you know in terms of who will do it do we have the right skills have we hired correct I mean who do we hire to do this so I think there are a lot of these different kind of barriers at different kind of stages also. Um, for opening up collections. So yeah, I, th I think the, there are those kind of barriers that we will have to talk about as time progresses. A long time ago, I think um, I heard Mr. Michael Peter Edson, I think he said this at a Sharing is Caring conference. And it's something that has stayed with me. It has shaped my understanding. It has shaped my outlook and 
sort of beautifully summarizes my approach towards what I do. Um, he said that culture is not something that's frozen in amber. Um, it is. It has only got meaning when it is alive in our minds and is reworked by our hands and loved in our hearts. I think for me, that has been the essence of Open Glam. Mm-hmm. To any institution that's opening up, my message um, would be to just think of the vision or the mission of your institution. I'm positive that in 99% of the cases, it's to do with education, with scholarship, with spreading knowledge and ideas. And, you know, just, just find comfort in knowing that opening up collections will only align with those values and that mission. Uh, any kind of restriction on your collections is probably just the very opposite of um, your mission in the digital space, at least. So, um, yeah, I think that for any glam that's starting out, I, I would urge them to even start small if that's that's what keeps them comfortable. And it's good to look at material that's already in the public domain before opening up. So you can envision the kind of possibilities that it will open up when you see uh, how these collections have impacted uh, your institution as such. And uh, yeah, I also urge Glam to look at the bigger picture, to think of the impact the collections could have when you open up. And if, if your collections were online for anybody to use, maybe someone would use it making a plugin or an app, and maybe you could use it at your next exhibition. So think of the bigger picture, and uh, even if it's one small step at a time, move towards opening up.